All right, so I'll just minimize that. So yeah, thanks everyone for dialing in um, to the July session of the Power BI and Data Analytics for Enviro's Meetup. Today, really excited. Um, we've got a Power BI and sort of Data Analytics. Mim's got a few other tools that he'll present on, all focused on the energy sector. And we did an energy focused uh, Power BI session uh, earlier in the year, so that's why it's revisited. So Joel's going to talk to us uh, about a home solar power BI report that he's developed and put together. He said more is just like a hobby. Um, and Mim's going to share with him a dashboard uh, to track Australia's energy or electricity market, um, excluding WA, I believe. Um, but yeah, he'll go into a lot more detail on the idea and development <coughs> behind that. Just in relation to a bit of housekeeping, um, so we're back on Teams. Previous uh, months we've been using Zoom, but back on Teams today. Please just be um, courteous of the speakers. Make sure you mute yourself um, when not talking. Type your questions in the chat as you think of them as you go. Um, and there's a fair few Power BI and sort of analytics experts on the call. We'll all sort of jump in and try and um, answer them as we go. Otherwise, we do have time um, to speak to Joel and Mim after their sessions for a bit of Q&A. Um, as I said, the session's been recorded and we'll make the recording and the blog available um, on both the YouTube and um, in the Meetup group as well. And just a tip for Teams, um, if you need to zoom in on the shared screen presenting, then you can uh, hold control and um, do that through your mouse. Um, just uh, an acknowledgement of country. So uh, based on where I'm dialing in, which is down in the Mornington Peninsula, just acknowledge the people and the elders of the Boon, Warung and the Bunurung um, tribes and the uh, members of the Kulin Nation as the traditional, own traditional owners of the custodians of these lands and waters. So this is actually a view taken the other day. Um, this is my new running route along the cliffs of uh, Mornington Peninsula. So it's a pretty nice part of the world, but yeah, just like to acknowledge the traditional landowners. Um, those people that don't know, uh, Alice Drummond uh, my, uh, the, is also the co-founder of Discovery Eye, as well as myself. Um, we're also a husband and wife team based out of Melbourne in Victoria here. Um, so at Discovery Eye, um, who are the sponsors for the meetup, um, we focus on Power BI training and mentoring, uh, development of custom visuals. We have Daniel Marsh-Patrick, who some of you might know is part of our team. Um, we can develop you know, Power BI visuals, end-to-end uh, -end Power BI reporting, uh, also do graphic design, so really focused on that communication element. So we bring in infographics and animations into our tools and also custom web apps, again, through the support of, um, of Daniel. And both of us sort of have an environmental and engineering background, and so we focus mainly in the water and environmental industry. Today's agenda, I'm not sure why that's off the screen, but um, we'll be able to just do it, as I mentioned. Uh, Joel's going to talk to us about his home Power BI dashboard uh, and go into the detail behind how it extracts the usage and sort of insights that he's been able to develop or um, gather through the development of the Power BI dashboard. And then Mim's going to talk about more the workflow um, of developing this Australia's electricity market dashboard. Um, and the public link, uh, you can sort of click on it. Um, I might just share it in the chat. Afterwards, um, if you wanted to go and play with it yourself, uh, we'll just make that available. So it should be good. And I think that's pretty much all from my end in terms of a um, intro. So Joel, we might get started with you, mate, if that's all right. And um, yeah, if you wanted to share screens and we can we can begin, it'll be good. Absolutely. Can everyone see my screen? Yep, it's good. Yep, good to go. Awesome. All right, well, thanks for that, Christian, and thanks everyone for showing up for the talks today. Uh, my name's Joel. I'm a developer, about 20 something years at it now, mostly in the Microsoft stack. And this story begins about a year ago in the middle of Melbourne's big lockdown. So, sympathies to those in Sydney, we know what you're going through. Um, we had no solar panels at home. I was looking around my family, my wife, my Kids homeschool and the mother-in-law were all inside during the day, chewing up copious amounts of electricity at the peak rate. And I thought, this is nuts. It's time now to get into the solar game. So I spent a bit of the time in lockdown just researching the options and the technology that was out there and came up with uh, this system. So once the lockdowns lifted and tradies were able to do their job again. We got this installed in late October last year. So it's about a 10K system um, based on the end phase. 
just get rid of that. Um, yeah, so 28 panels. We've got some on the west, some on the east of the house. It's quite a good angle for the house to be positioned, actually, because we can sort of cover both sides nicely. Um, we went for the micro inverters, which um, I'm sure most of you are probably aware, but um, yeah, it just gives you more uh, telemetry per panel. We can um, possibly add more at a later date without needing to worry about the single inverter on the side. So that went in in October. There was a bit of a, a, a delay by the time we could actually start using it. It needed, you know, safety certifications and all of those kinds of things. So with the data that I'm using, I've just basically started everything from the 1st of November just to use for complete months. You know, better idea than the data. In phase itself, they do give you monitoring apps and a website, and it's pretty decent to be honest. However, there were a few little things that uh, it didn't tell me. The particularly around the finance, there was a way to say that you know how much a, um, a kilowatt hour was worth, but it didn't treat. There, there was no concept of off peak, peak, um, even the feed-in tariff, etc. It was just sort of one flat rate for everything. So I wanted to explore a bit more of the data there. So. Just as a bit of a hobby project, um, since this system has gone in, I've written a, a, con a console app that scrapes the Enphase data via their API, as well as some of the uh, weather data from the Bureau of Meteorology. And that stores it into a local SQL Server database. And I do a lot of the transformations and aggregations and just a lot more of the work there at that SQL level. It's just something I'm a bit more comfortable with. And then that feeds all of the charts and data that we're about to see inside this Power BI file. So jumping into some of the data, this is my production since the 1st of November last year. And you can see we're, we've had some really good days. We're up over the 70s a few times for the kilowatt hours uh, produced. And Unfortunately, it's trending down given that um, you know, summer's out the way and we're now heading, in, or we're now in the thick of winter, to be honest. Um, no real obvious um, groundbreaking discoveries here, but uh, yeah, I, I expect after a, a full year, I think the data will be a bit more useful as far as trends and things go, just to see like a full uh, year's worth of data, how trends are. One thing I've been keen to look into is the time of day and what's getting produced. So this is the average daily production by hour or by half hour block uh, in the month of January, which was the best producing month. You can see that you know sort of 6.30 in the morning, things are starting to kick off all the way up to sort of 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. If we contrast this to June, you can see you know, quite a big difference. Um, Obviously, the, the days are shorter and the angle and all of that isn't optimal for solar production. But uh, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting to see just how big a difference it is at sort of eight o'clock before anything really starts to take place in those winter months. Um, and then, yeah, just and I can sort of see the full year over time, how those lie. So that's the production side of things with the consumption. Again, this is sort of trending in the direction I don't want. It's been increasing and probably a few reasons for this, but basically we're using a lot more heating in winter than we are using cooler, the, the aircon in summer. And you know, we, 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 there are some spikes that do jump out, but there's you know a fairly solid trend where that's just been increasing. Just some days where we've, the max is up at uh, 42. Next thing I wanted to do was just overlay the consumption and the production, finding the net values. And for the most part of the time we've had it, we've definitely been in the uh, positive. So the net, yeah, we've been producing a lot more than we've been consuming up until very recently. Um, I was I was quite pumped for the first few months, just getting these really solid positive days and then it was sort of around April that um, monitoring this we finally started getting into some of those negative days and then obviously they've picked up they've been a lot more consistent now that we're in the thick of winter 
And it's the daily one where I spend most of my time. I find and a, a lot of the work's taken place. I find this um, just a bit more useful to look at and get ideas. So um, bear with me a little, little um, quite a few panels and info on here. But if we start with the chart at the bottom, uh, we can just um, you know, jump around and pick days at, at random. But the idea here is that uh, the blue at the top, this is an awesome day. So the blue is the power that we're generating. See a few clouds, sort of a bit of cloud cover there, stopped it being like a nice, perfect um, uh, generation. But uh, And the red at the bottom is what we're actually consuming. So I'm guessing we were on holiday at this time because there's really not much going on. But um, if we look at, let's say, yeah, days like this, um, you know, there was a, probably the aircon on sort of six o'clock at night, just as the sun's weakening enough. So we're actually consuming more than we're producing at that point. Uh, if we look at just some of the, the stats here, so we've got the basic, uh, how much we produce that day compared to the monthly average. Same with consumption. With the cost and profit, this was one of the areas that I just wasn't able to get out of the uh, installers app, the Enphase app. But this cost and profit takes into account all the usage, all the consumption at 15 minute intervals throughout the day. It, it'll know what rate, if it's peak off peak, if it's a uh, feed in tariff and all of those kinds of things, and it will work out. When all said and done, plus the daily charge from the retailer, did I make money or did it cost me money? So days like this, uh, $3.51 monthly average in January of 269. If we were to move sort of into the colder months, there's a whole lot more red. This is a horrible day. Even with 10 kilowatts on the roof, we can still barely put a dent in some of the heating and possibly clothes drying, I'm not sure. Um, so on days like this, this would have cost me $6. The monthly average would have cost me $4.19. The energy independence measurement, it's quite low here, uh, what that's basically calculating is it's saying of all the energy that I consumed that day, how much of it actually came off the roof from solar. So until I get solar battery storage, uh, that will never be 100%. But if we look at some of the summer months, you can see that, you know, good 70% of the usage just came straight from solar. So we didn't get billed for that. The money saved, this is, and one of the other calculations I was really trying to um, work out was this is basically saying um, of all of the of the electricity that I used that I would have otherwise if I didn't have solar how much would the electric how much would I have paid today if I didn't have the solar on the roof that would also then include if I also happen to get a feed-in tariff for that that gets added to it as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I can go into it further if anyone has questions on that. But um, just the other stats then are we, how much uh, at a high level did we import? How much did we export? What's the net? And then the monthly averages for both of those. Okay, so just analyzing some of the costs. Uh, this top one is based purely on the what did it cost me or did I make a profit today? Um, and you can see you know, no great surprises here that um, we get bills in our favour through to March and then as it gets colder, it swings the other way. And then I've just got the Power BI narrative here that um, you know, updates with it each refresh just to output a bit of info there. The saved by month is the total of that other concept where how much have I saved simply by having the solar system installed on the roof, with December being the best month so far. Now that's useful for the from the point of view that it can tell me, okay, so far with the number of days that I've had this, I've managed to save thirteen hundred odd dollars, which works out to be about five dollars a day. Based on that, I should be able to work out with a you know, fair bit of accuracy, when would the system have paid for itself? And it's currently telling me that's October 28, which is pretty much eight 
years to the day since this thing went live. Now, obviously, every time I refresh this data, that's going to change. Maybe it's going to be sooner or later. Again, it's one of those stats that I want to see once the full year has played out and I can just see usage. Now, I mentioned earlier too that we're using uh, micro inverters, so we get quite a bit of data uh, on each panel's output, uh, how much it's been generating. And I was, you know, no real groundbreaking info here, but we do have these two outliers. And I was curious if we go back to this, I was curious if all things being equal, what side of the house generates more electricity? Turns out it's the West. These five here uh, generate more for, for a given panel than the other ones. Um, having said that, though, the, the lowest performing panel also sits on the West. You can see here there's a much greater spread between those five panels on the West, whereas the ones on the East side are much more consistent. There's a lot, there's a variance going on there. I suspect with this one, I haven't proved it yet, but it's on the things to do. Uh, there might be a TV antenna that occasionally casts a shadow. It's not consistent, but it might occasionally pass over that one. I just, I want to get a bit more data on and get the ladder out and have a look at certain times of the day when I couldn't be bothered just to confirm that. But in any case, the, the difference that it is still only works out to maybe a dollar or two over a year if it was, uh, if it is the case of that antenna covering it. So I'm not too concerned, it's just more from a data point of view why that uh, difference exists. Okay, so that's it for the charts. Uh, I just want to chat a bit about if I, as I said, it's an ongoing project. It's a bit of a hobby thing I've been doing. What I want to be working on next is pulling in weather data just to, uh, for the daily breakdown and, an, and analysis, see you know, is correlations between temperature, the exposure, uh, was it raining? Just more info on that daily board. Uh, a real-time dashboard where we could say, you know, right now the system is currently in net. Um, we, you know, we're generating more than we're using. You could do the dishwasher and the dryer, but not the cooling or, you know, whatever, just based on those expected usages. Given that I'm also sitting on a lot of the usage data, I'd like to analyze what electricity plans are out there and just how much I could save by moving to another one and getting um, you know, much more concrete numbers on expected bills and things if I was to switch. I would love to be looking at the battery storage as well. That probably won't happen this year, but it's in the near future, I hope, if um, depending how prices go. And obviously there's a whole range of analysis and stats and things that I can pull out once that's in place. That's the end of my talk. Uh, if anyone has any follow-up questions, please um, ask away and also reach out on Twitter or email. I'm happy to chat on this further. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm a developer. I'm not an um, electrical engineer or expert in any of this stuff. It's a lot of, a lot of it's just been working it out, um, doing a bit of research and finding out what sort of questions I want to uh, what I have and what I want to solve and finding the data to do that. Okay, on that note, I'll pass back to Christian. Thanks, Joel. That was, um, that was amazing, mate. There's a lot of lot of claps being shared and there was a lot of comments uh, and a few questions in the chat as you were going. It was like pretty mind-blowing the sort of insights you can. You said when you sort of compare it, I'd like to see what the Enphase app standard is and how you've sort of been able to obviously build it up to get all these insights. That's um, fantastic. Sure. Just just as a – this is the Enphase app. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've sort of modelled their this graph. You know, the, I've been using this for so long, it sort of makes sense to me. Um, I can just quickly A, B, so November 14. So that's my version of the data and that's theirs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I haven't been able to get these numbers completely exact to theirs because I have to work with a 15 minute granularity, whereas they're counting electrons for all I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's, as far as the bill, it's generally sort of in the 95% upwards accuracy, particularly with the bills. Um, so I'm confident, you know, I'm, I'm not 
orders of magnitude away from correct, but um, yeah. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, we did have a few questions. questions. Yeah, um, I think uh, Sandy Zhu asked, uh, are you using spot price for calculating the dollars saved? Uh, no, that's just purely based on my electricity rate. So I know that if you, to use this example on the screen here, um, all of this red usage here would have been at the peak rate, which I know what that is, 20 whatever cents kilowatt hour. Um, if this one, for example, was off peak, then I would have calculated that at the cheaper rate um, as part of the calculation. So it, it's not spot rates, it's just using my existing electricity rate, my account. Yep. No, it's excellent. Um, I liked and I was quite interested how you sort of showed a picture of the house and then you sort of, was it, did you say the west side, some of those panels yeah. seem to produce more? Yeah, for Ed, I'm still waiting for Google Images to update their satellite. This is just the um, the plan that we're given as part of the quote. But yeah, so these five here, one of those on average will deliver more, will produce more energy than one of these on average. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not to say I want everything moved over to this side because obviously there's all the morning usage that these things are going to generate. And it, it, it's also, we're not talking a great deal of difference either. I, I don't want to get too um, <laughs> petty about how much yeah. stuff this is generating. It's more just from a curiosity point of view as to what sides are better. Cool. Um, another question we had from Math. Uh, can you show us the, the I think the scraper, like the way the, the method for bringing the data in? I think. Um, yeah. It's, so it's a, well, it's a C sharp app. Um, there's a it lives, there's a bit of uh, SQL uh, stored procedures that do a lot of the conversion, but um, basically we're hitting up the Enphase API. Yep. We're doing, um, uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't plan on presenting this. I'm not, I'm not against presenting it. I just haven't got it so much prepared, but um, it, it <laughs> basically, it operates in two places. It, it does, um, it scrapes all the data into kind of landing tables. If you're thinking of sort of data warehouse lines, it just brings it all in raw. Um, there's these different areas, the energy lifetime, that uh, the, the the big statistics, not not broken up at all. It's just saying, hey, you know, how much have we got for the whole day? Uh, consumption, so that's production, consumption, uh, the inverters themselves. So. Yep each one of those, um, and then the intervals. So the intervals are those 15 minute chunks that I was explaining, that they're the things that help me calculate costs. Uh, and then, so once that happens, um, we do the scrape and then we've got the processing. And so I've just basically just calling stored procs in a row that um, collate and align the data. It calculates a lot of the daily statistics, which then go on to feed the monthly data. If I ever ex expand it to do annual level things, that'll just be another one there, or perhaps I throw it all into one stored proc. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm almost a bit embarrassed to show this code because, as I said, it is a hobby project. It's not. <laughs> Mate, it's, it's, it's not full fledged. It's fantastic. Like, you know, it's. I think everyone on the call would appreciate. It. It's very impressive, especially from a from a hobby perspective. And then you've built this into something that you know. I mean, have you thought about selling this back to Enfa? <laughs> it's really good. Like, yeah, I mean, it's excellent. Okay. Uh, just looking if there are any other questions. Uh, Aaron Yin asked, is this uh, VB? No, C sharp. C sharp, yep. Yeah. Um, and if anyone has any other questions, um, we might we might call it there, Joel, and uh, yeah. if anyone does have any other questions, if we've got a bit of time, time at the end. But thanks again, mate. That was a fantastic presentation and really appreciate you sharing that with everyone. Um, yeah, Matt Burr is still giving you the rounds of applause, so thanks, Matt. Uh, <laughs> um, that's okay. Mim, uh, did you want to share your screens and we can get we can get started with your presentation, um, which I think everyone's very, very interested in as well. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep, no, perfect. All right. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, um, my name is Mim Unjuelo. People find it hard to pronounce, so I'm just known as Mim. Uh, I'm construction planner, so I'm I don't have like software background, and currently I'm working as a Power BI developer. So I have like a website where I talk about um, Power BI, Oracle, Primavera, and stuff about construction. Uh, pretty active on Twitter, rather ranting about stuff. And here is my LinkedIn profile. So a bit of background. <clears throat> so a couple of years ago, I we were building solar farm. So we do early construction and uh, once a manager like we, we finish a solar farm and we start doing commissioning and one of the manager want to see how much we're um, producing so and he knows that i like i play with power bi so he asked me to do a report so i made um i the report just power query get the data and he was happy actually at that time all he wanted is how much we're producing per month and I thought, because the data is public, maybe it will be cool if if I try to make a public dashboard. And by the way, obviously, I'm not the first one who who've done it, but usually the um, the public dashboard you found there rather aggregate data. It's not just by individual uh, generator. So. I said, OK, let's um, let's try it. So just for fun. So this story was like two years ago at that time. And this is like personal project, so it's not related to my work. And because it's a personal project. Obviously, I, I can't afford to use premium at that time. There was no premium per user. So. Um, we had this issue is that like, you know, Power BI Pro or actually free, it's limited to eight times per day. And which is fine for 99% of the cases, except for this case. I thought it will be nice to see the, the five minute data. Because the, um, the spot price and the generation basically change every five minutes. So I tried a lot of um, different tricks, like with data flow and um, streaming data flow, and but it's um, it wasn't good. And the, the the problem is because I was just like a Power BI developer, like more my world of view is just like DAX and Power Query, and um, I asked some people on the community and their their idea is um, in this case in this yeah in this type of cases it's nice to have a separate database i know it sounds obvious but for me uh, it was growth breaking because i i will all i knew is just basically power query so the idea is um, <clears throat> having a separate database will make it, it's more work, so initially it's a bit painful, but later it will make your life much, much easier. So the idea is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is to get um, a database. And again, it's a personal project. So I want a free database, ideally. Uh, that's not obvious. Like no one will give you just um, free database. And the thing is, because the data is relatively big, like we're talking currently it's 800 million. <clears throat> anyway, I tried different option in Azure, AWS. It's actually, that's the beauty when it's personal project. You, you, you just try stuff. And um, for this particular use case, I found BigQuery just like perfect. And the reason is um, because the free egress, uh, they, they provide free egress. It's basically the data when you run a query, uh, BigQuery is in Google Cloud. 
So when you get the data back, you don't pay for the network. And that's a big deal because all provider like Azure or AWS or I don't know, ABM Cloud or all of them, if um, if you run query and you get the result back, you pay for the network. And I, I just hate that. But in the case of BigQuery, it's free. I think there is a limit, uh, like 300 terabytes or something, which is more than what I need. The second is um, loading data is free. So like all other database, like Synapse or Snowflake or SQL Server, when you load data, like the, the compute has to be <clears throat> has to be running, but in the case of BigQuery, it's totally free. Uh, there is a free cache. So basically when you run a query, if you run the same query again and the data did not change, it's free. Uh, you don't need a work email. You just, you can use just your personal email and the, um, the free tier is, is really good. Uh, so you get 10 gigabyte of storage and one terabyte of query per month for free. Again, that depends on the use case. Like if you have terabyte of data, this one is nothing. But in my case, like the eight, the 800 million, it's it's small for compared to the scale of BigQuery. So literally, I I pay nothing. <clears throat> uh, there is like a total separation of storage and compute, like Snowflake which uh, I'll show later why it's a big deal, especially when you want to share data. Uh, there is a reporting tool. Initially, I, uh, it's Google Data Studio. I didn't care much, but uh, turned out I end up using it because I had some issue with Power BI. Uh, there is something called BI Engine. It's still in, um, in, in private preview and it's basically an in-memory database. Uh, think of it of just loosely something like, I know it will be controversial. Think of it of like VertiBack, but with SQL interface, just loosely. That's not just, just to get the idea. Uh, the best part, you don't need credit card. So you can just use it without credit card. And the user interface is really easy. But all this is is nice and all. But at the end, again, personal project, it's really cheap. Um, I want to pay as low as possible. And the way uh, BigQuery work, there is like diff a lot of different models. But in my case, you just um, pay by how much you scanned, which is the same as Synapse uh, serverless in Azure. But there is a big difference is that um, Synapse doesn't have a free cache, which is like a deal breaker. Um, again, the BigQuery has um, the, the cache where the same query you don't pay. There is another mode, which I'm not interested in, but I thought just to be uh, to give like the big picture is that um, you can pay by you can use more or less the same approach of Snowflake. So instead of paying by um, by usage, you pay by compute. So if your compute is, let's say when I say compute is the server, let's say if the server is working, running for like three minutes, you pay for three minutes, but then if you turn it off, you don't pay. But uh, Snowflake is, substantially better because in the case of Snowflake, you can simply say, like in, in BigQuery, you have to manage that. You have like to write some kind of script when where to turn on the compute and turn it off. But in the case of Snowflake, you can just start it and say, this compute, can you just auto suspend after, let's say one, five minutes and that's it. So Snowflake gracefully, if there is a query coming, it will just run up that if there is nothing, it will just um, suspend without just automatically without any maintenance. 
Uh, again, it's important to, to understand it's always, it depends. In my case, the data is small, <clears throat> uh, 800 million. Actually, I will show it here. It's only, so this is like my, my biggest table. And it's only like 13 gigabyte, which is nothing. So the, um, this model, which is consuming by usage, is just perfect. But if your data is one terabyte, I think we will have like a different kind of conversation. So I'm not saying BigQuery is cheap for everything. That depends. That depends on your specific use case. Sometimes it's cheaper to um, to use this mode, which is pay per user, and in other cases, it's not. It's better to have a compute running. It, it turned out to be cheaper. So that depends. And um, I've been using this since like two years. So the, the initially I got this free tier. So you know, like when, when you subscribe to, um, let's say to Azure, they give you this cre free credit, so, which I don't show here. But here when I start paying, and as you can see, I always pay around one dollar. Uh, here it was, I nearly got bankrupt. I made a mistake in Python, and it cost me five dollars. Yeah, I'm trying to be funny. Uh, I don't know if, if it's working or not. Uh, this one turned out it's the so because BigQuery and Snowflake. And yes, Synapse not really, or let's say yeah, BigQuery and um, and Snowflake they have like a real separation between compute and storage. One of the biggest implication is that when you share when you share data, you can like have let's say you have a table and you share it with someone else. And it doesn't cost you anything because the storage, you, like you pay for the storage, but if the third party want to query the data, they use their own compute. So it's like a fantastic tool for sharing, like for sharing data. It's not like other, other database where if you want to share like, um, the, the guy who pr the provider need to pay for the compute here. All you have to do is say, I have those table, I want just to make them public and everyone can just use his own compute and just access. So for this particular case, I made those um, one, uh, four table totally public. So the main table contain like the history for like the five years by the way, when I say public, the data is already public. I just think it's more convenient. So instead of doing your own ETL, you can just, um, I can show it here. Sorry. So if uh, I put the link in the, in the chat. And because if you want, just to play with it, if you click on this one, it will open uh, BigQuery here, and it will have like a query. So what you do, this is like the, um, the name of the project, test-187010. Currently, uh, unfortunately, BigQuery, you cannot search. Uh, if you make your data set public, there is no easy way for other people to search for it unless it's a public data set, which is a separate, um, separate approach. So here, assume you go to BigQuery, just go to pin a project and just type uh, this project, and then you get access to those table. The thing is because BigQuery give you like one terabyte of uh, query per month, it's totally free. And the data is updated every five minutes. And the idea is that you can build your, you can use whatever tool you want, uh, Excel or or Power BI or or Python or yeah. And 
because all tools basically accept SQL. So like you have total freedom to use any front end you want. All right, so this is the, um, the arc. Yeah, this is like the pipeline. And uh, the data is the IMO data, which is the, um, the network. I guess you guys are aware of it. Uh, the electricity market operator. Uh, they are very graceful and they provide the, the CSV data. And for like, for all detail and manageable. So here the way it's set up is um, I use Python and I put the code here. It's an old version, like I keep changing, but anyway, it's, as you can see, it's from two years ago. So you can just play around with it. It's a simple Python. To be honest, like, um, you know how it works. You just Google and go to Stack Overflow and just copy paste and magically it works. So I have like three three pipelines. So there is this uh, dimension table, which is which show it's um it show for example for every generator that attributes and like what kind of uh, fuel is it like solar or or wind or coal and the location and then I maintain uh, the coordinate. So it's like later, it's like fancy. You can see exactly the, the location. Uh, there is the five minute data, which give you like the generation and uh, the price, the spot price and the rooftop. Uh, the rooftop, it, for some reason, it's 30 minutes. And my understanding, there is no how to say, exact way to get. I think it's just an estimate. And there is this another data which is the same, but they release it. Basically, they aggregate the data and um, they release the next day. Because sometimes it's very rare, but it happens is that you get some mistakes here. So sometimes you get a file and the file is empty. But I think in the next day they correct it. So the pipeline is um, it's relatively easy. I'm just using Python. You take the file and which is zipped then and zip it and just create external table and when you say external table it's just the fancy word of saying uh, okay so when you have a database you have to approach either you load the data directly into a table into the database using its own storage or you can just create like a folder using the same structure of the file and it will be yeah you know like like this what's called like that data lake but the reality it's not it's simply a folder with with a bunch of file and here the same for the the five minute i'm creating three table which is uh which are basically uh, I get the file in CSV and then I change it to Parquet and then I partition, uh, I do a partition per day, which you can see here. Let's give me a second. By the way, if if uh, if anyone have like any question, like feel free to interrupt. Because I'm not sure if. Uh... No, I think everyone's just um. Yeah, like just watching you go, man. It's seriously impressive workflow, man. I think it's uh, it's it's nice to sort of have you explaining like all the different elements of the tool and the you know development behind how you've got to this level. But um, no, no questions so far. So please keep okay, going. Okay, good. No, it's good. No, no. Actually, what, what, um, my takeaway: when you use your own credit card, <laughs> you become like different. It's it's amazing. Yeah, exactly right. So this is the, um, you know, like when, when you go to Google and uh, on Twitter, you see this fancy uh, lake house and it's just a fancy word for saying a folder. So this folder, for example, contain the price. And you can see it's only, part, it's a partition per day. So basically you group the, uh, the file into individual days and then the individual files are parquet 
and they could be actually there is no reason why they are parquet i could have just put them at csv but for me just for um for learning and to sound like smart i just put in parquet but it doesn't mean anything you can just put a csv so once you have your files here i could have again i could have just loaded directly to um to bigquery storage but I think because of my Excel background, I feel better when I see the files physically, like I can touch them. They, 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 I feel they are more real. I know it's irrational, but that's basically the reason. So once you have those file and then the fun start. So if I go back to BigQuery, So I have what, what's called external, external table, which simply it's a link to those um, to those files. So this is an just an example. And you can see there is no data here. But the data is saying read um, the source data is just read from uh, from this folder. And then once you have like access to those a table, then you need like SQL to start doing transformation. And um, BigQuery, actually you can use uh, DBT, which, which I think it's very famous, but uh, there, there is this thing called data form, which Google has bought it recently. And it make it extremely easy. I give a show example here. So before, let's say you have a lot of table and doing the orchestration was like a nightmare because you have a view that depends on the table. So you need first a table to be updated, to update another table and it's like a nightmare. But using tool like dbt and data form, you just say that um, like this, this table depends on this one instead of us, uh, like, you know, when you're doing SQL, instead of saying from and you put the exact name. Instead, you put a reference, and uh, data form is smart enough to know that there is a link, and it manage all the orchestration. So it make like the uh, building pipeline in SQL extremely easy. Uh, the best part, okay. So we have here um, um, like a data mart with all those table, and then you do your um, front end, which is basically the report. Again, just give me a second. Yep. So initially, because uh, what I do, I like I'm, I'm I love Power BI, and I'm, and and this is my daily job. But uh, unfortunately, which I would never understand, Power BI blocked when you do a publish to web, you cannot download the data, which is for me like the must, like irritating aspect of, of Power BI because when you want to share data, when you want to share a report, I think now we're not into the stage where you show visual. I noticed that uh, the people who go to the website, yeah, it's nice to have visual and everything and real time, blah, 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 but the user need to be able to download the data and do his own analysis. That Power BI is, is blocking this functionality. And um, initially I thought they block it because they don't want people to abuse for some reason, like it may take a lot of resources, but actually the, the reason is, um, yes, some PM in, in, in Power BI team think that it's safer. So there is less risk from people publishing data, which is fair that it makes our life, like people who want to share public data, just impossible. So I just showed here that I have them, I have it, and it works, but it's useless because you cannot download the data. And as you can see here, the data, it's, um, I put like a nice trick here. There is like a disconnected slicer. 
and it like it's uh, triggered every one minute. And this chart, if you keep the the page open, it will change if every five minutes. And actually, you can you can test it. So it's like real time, just using free Power BI. Again, you can download the data. So it's unfortunate. So, but, and that's the beauty of building a separate, um, like, that's the beauty of not using a whole pipeline using only one vendor. Because I'm separating the ETL from the front end, I can, like, it's free world. Like Microsoft don't want to give them download. Fine, I will use another tool, which I'm exactly what I'm doing. I'm using Google Data Studio, and in Google Data Studio, fine, you came here, export, and you can download till um, seven hundred fifty thousand. So again, what I learned from this, although it's a personal project, if you any data that you care about, just put it on a database. You will have like more leverage against Vonter if you you are not you are not into this Vonter locking. They they don't decide if you want something, they don't give it. You just switch to another to another tool. And just to give an example, it's uh, there's this streamlet, which is a new um, it uses like Python and it's it's extremely easy. And you can build like um, web app. So I'm just using it here as, as as an example to show that it's important to separate. Because before, like two years ago, when I started, I started using Dataflow, which is very easy and nice and everything. But the problem with Dataflow, like only Power BI can read from Dataflow. So I'm already locked to Microsoft ecosystem. That here using a database, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be BigQuery. You can use SQL Server or Snowflake or whatever you want. Yeah, I'm I'm afraid I'm repeating the same important like the, the, the same concepts, but it's important. Like if you care about data, put in a database. That's really what I learned. Uh, what else? Yeah, uh, this just to give you like the usage. I never, as I said, like um, BigQuery has one terabyte free per month, and based on my usage here, it never reached uh, the average is 500 gigabyte. And to be honest, there is a lot of waste here. It should be way less, but I, I, I could have done more optimization, but didn't bother me. It's working, so why change it? Uh, here you can see the usage for Python, how much is uh, is consuming per, per month. And um, I think that's it. That's pretty much. Thanks, Ben. That was um that was excellent. I guess um one quick question I had. So in terms of that final front end um front end presentation, did you is this all your sort of ideas or were you speaking to other people about like ways you wanted to sort of present this data or? Uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's mine. No, no, cause I was just going to say like in your, in your main sort of, um, in the NEM tracker, it's sort of, there's a lot of different pages there and it sort of really communicates all these things in a really nice way. So, yeah, and uh, I like the comparison and the pros and cons um, you've made between sort of Microsoft and Google and then the Streamlit option as well. So thank you. I think that was great. Yeah, by the way, uh, yeah, um, actually, that's quite funny. Um, thanks for asking the question. Like, there is all this report, we just like play around, but the most popular report is this one, download data. Literally, they, because people want, um, especially they are in the solar space, they came here and they, they download the data specific for there, which is fair because a lot of people think that um, the, the, the dashboard is the final product. For me, it's already the start mm -hmm. because everyone has a different idea how to present. And 99% of people 
they want only data and do their report in Excel. That's live fact. Like, yep. We have to live with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very true, for sure. Um, I, I know you did sort of mention, uh, do you know what the limitation was with uh, West Australian data sources? Yeah, and no, actually it's not limited. Um, in the market, the national electricity market, for some reason, uh, there is a market in the East state and the Western state, it's a separate market. Okay. Yeah, I could have, uh, actually the, the data is available that I need just to create like new pay uh, pipelines. And because now I'm based in the East and all the solar farm at the time were in the base, so I didn't. Uh... Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, yeah, because I know there's a few people on the call. Yeah, obviously, Wynn and a few others um, calling in from Perth or WA. So I was just thinking what possible expansion over to there um, if, if, you know, people were interested in, as you said, sort of keep building out this tool. But um, no, it's fantastic. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing. Does anyone else on the call have any other questions for Mim um, in the last few minutes? If not, I mean, thanks both Mim and, and Joel. They were really good presentations. And just, you know, as we try and do through this meetup, um, just try and share real world applications. You know, we've got, whether it's hobbies or for work or just in general um, of ways that you can use, not just Power BI, but as sort of Mim said, um, all these other options for both, you know, preparing, analyzing and, um, and sharing and communicating our data. So I might um, just share quickly now, Mim, um, just to close out on on this session. Um, yeah, you're getting a lot of lot of applause in the in the chat. So thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a quick one, like if um, uh, I got the help by by because I, I'm not an electrical engineer. The guy doing Nemlog, which I put here, is um, if you want like any service especially like Power or WA or this website is really amazing. And the guy's like, he has like, I don't know, 40 years experience in, in network. Cool. So it's worth having a look. Yeah, can you just post that one in the chat, Mim? And I'll, yes, make, sure, yeah, yeah. I'll make sure I include that because in Because I yeah. was stuck. Sometimes I was stuck like I don't really, because I'm, I'm not an electrical engineer. Yeah. And he was really grateful and uh, he answered question. Although I was some kind of competitor or something. <laughs> yeah, he was nice. He's a really nice guy. That's great. Excellent. Cool. All right. I'll just bring this up. Um, yeah, so thanks. Thanks, everyone, for, for dialing in. Um, as I said, two fantastic sessions focused on the, uh, on the energy sort of space. Um, and next month, we've got our next session uh, for 19th of August, um, and we've got Stephen Thatcher and Liam Murray. Um, so Stephen works for the Green Building Council of Australia, and Liam uh, runs his own company, uh, Build Apps, and they've developed a power platform uh, solution for assessing sustainability of Australian green buildings. So it should be a really, really good session um, for this one. So I'll um, just post in the chat as well. Uh, this link if you wanted to um, register for this one. So yeah, that's happening 19th of August. Um, and just to wrap up from today, um, as usual, we've recorded the session, so we'll make this available for people um, to tune into later on. Um, and really just thank you all for dialing in, but most importantly, thank you to our presenters um, for volunteering their time um, and sharing two really, really cool examples. So. Um, with that, I uh, stop sharing. And if there's no other final questions from anyone, I guess, um, yeah, thanks all and stay safe. Uh, some of us across the country are in lockdown, some of us aren't. But uh, yeah, wherever you're sort of dialing in from, um, hope everyone keeps well and thank you very much again. So thank you. Thanks, mate.